He's pretty much got the number one down completely. Number two, that is another story. Hi guys, it's Amanda with Eat Pray Crunch and I wanted to do a video today on a potty training update because I realized it has been two whole months since we started potty training Alex and I thought, I should do an update on how things are going. So first of all, you probably saw the videos that I made on our whole potty training initiation. And that was basically using the three day method. Got rid of diapers at least during the day, during his waking hours. And I'll link the video down below instead of trying to describe everything that we did all over again. So you can go watch those. And since then, um, this is basically how things have gone down. So um, the first three days were pretty darn intense and kind of stressful. And I would say that the first couple weeks were less stressful than the first few days, but still kind of stressful. But once we got over that initial hump of the first couple weeks, um, we've definitely gotten into a good rhythm and he's doing really well. So basically what happened was those first few weeks, you know, he was still having accidents and we, I basically didn't leave the house for like a week or two because I didn't feel confident enough that he would stay dry and I hadn't gotten any training pants like any like waterproof training pants at that point and you know it wasn't foolproof like when we were out away from a potty for a while so what we were doing um, all along to incentivize him was give him raisins because that is like one of his favorite treats we if he went number one he would get one raisin and if he went number two he would supposedly get a lar bar because that's like an even bigger treat to him. So basically the raisin incentive was amazing. It worked so, so well for us. And I felt like it wasn't like an over the top kind of treat. You know, he would get like one, maybe two or three raisins each time he went pee. And like, that's not that big of a deal and it's a healthy snack. So I felt like that worked really, really well for us. And it was amazing incentive for him. And I feel like that really got him in the habit of going number one and got him really good at it. Um, so basically um, about a week or so ago, I phased out the raisins because I felt like he didn't really need them anymore to go like he knew what he needed to do um, and he was basically doing it. And even when we were at other people's houses, like he would go if we didn't have the raisins available, like he would still go. So I was like, yeah, it's time to phase out the raisins. I just said, oh, raisins are all gone. And that was that. So at this point, he basically is almost staying dry almost all the time. He still has an accident now and then, um, but he's pretty much got the number one down completely. And I am so, so proud of him. Like we can go on outings and he will stay dry for like two or three hours now. As for number two, that is another story. Um, I think this is pretty common with all of the reading that I've done and talking with my mom friends who've gone through this and everything and that um, if you're starting a kid at about two and a half for potty training, usually the number one comes much quicker than getting the number two. And basically what he started doing was since we were still putting him in a diaper at nap time and at bedtime is he basically like shifted his poop schedule <laughs> so that he only goes number two during nap time and bedtime. And so, <laughs> cause he knows he's gonna be in a diaper then and because he's definitely not at the point of being night trained yet so that's about where we're at with that so that's why I say we're about halfway party trained because he's pretty much got the number one down not the number two so at this point he knows what he's supposed to do it's just a matter of will <laughs> so and you know that he knows he you know when he goes number two he like kind of goes off and hides and like he's he has this weird behavior where he's almost like anxious about it so we're not making a big deal out of it so like when he goes in his diaper we you know we just remind him say like, uh-oh poo poo goes in the potty and we just keep reminding that and he says like he says that he knows what he's supposed to do um, so I think it's just one of these days is just gonna click for him um, we've tried to you know have big incentives for him I guess we just haven't found like what the biggest incentive is for him like we, edible things are good we're good incentive for number one but it hasn't been for number two for him um, like we'll even let him hold the lar bar while he's sitting on the potty and say like, when you go number two, we'll open it and you can eat it. And he likes the idea of it, but it's not enough to actually get him to do it. So, you know, I'm thinking with his obsession with, um, he has this new obsession with 
um, like bridges and tunnels and things like that. So I'm, you know, I'm thinking for Christmas, I'd like to get him a train set anyway, like the little, you know, wooden train tracks with the little magnetized trains. Um, but I'm thinking, you know, maybe just like starting that set with getting one of the bridge sets. Cause I've seen those where it's like, you can get like an addition to go with it and it's like a bridge or a couple bridges. And I'm thinking that might be strong incentive for him. That would be pretty exciting for him. So that's where we're at in terms of that. Um, and also with the number one, like he, he still doesn't like prompt himself to go. Like he will hold it for a really long time and he'll go when we bring him to the bathroom to go. Um, but he still isn't at the point where he says, I need to go and will go by himself. Um, and he's also incapable. We've tried teaching him how, but he's still not like physically, you know, developmentally at the point where he can like pull his own pants up and down yet. So he definitely still needs our assistance for that. So I'm looking forward to the day when he is independent in that way. But for now, as long as, you know, as long as we go every hour or two, we've just kind of built it into our schedule, then he's got it down. So at this point, we're just kind of working on, you know, teaching him to tell us when he needs to go. Um, and he still has had a few accidents now and then. And when he does, he like, after it happens, he's like, oh, oh do you need to go pee pee? Like he gets worried, like he knows that he's supposed to. So I think he's starting to connect the dots with that too. So I feel like we're definitely getting there. I think doing it the way we're doing it definitely is like turning into like the more conventional way of potty training of doing it a more gradual way. And you know what, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with letting it be more gradual at this point. Um, I feel like I'm already doing less laundry now because he's, you know, he's in training pants during the day and most of the day he keeps them dry all the day. So that's fewer diapers that I'm washing already. Um, I've gotten to a point now where I am just putting him in a disposable diaper at nighttime and at nap time because I know he's going to poop at that point and like I'm already doing so much cloth diaper laundry with her. So I'm glad that he's definitely on his way. I'm really proud of where he's at at this point. I feel like for two and a half, like I feel like that's pretty darn good to have the number one down. And I feel like once he actually, once the number two clicks with him as well, I might even go back to doing a cloth diaper at nighttime and nap time with him um, just because it's like less spraying of poop for me. So unless he has poop during the day, which he does do sometimes now, um, and if he's done that like before bedtime and I know he's not going to at night, then, then I'll put him in a cloth diaper at night. So, you know. So in terms of training pants, um, I ended up getting some training pants that are waterproof on the outside. And um, I'm actually not gonna talk about them too much in this update because I'm gonna do a review of them. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Um, they have been working really, really well with us. We have been able to leave the house with them if he does have an accident, which he usually doesn't now. And sometimes when we go out for like an all day outing, I will just put him in a pull up because um, it's, it's just easier if we're gonna be out all day. Most of the time he'll even keep the pull up dry, um, but if he does have a poo accident while we're out, then that's easier to deal with while we're out, especially when I have a baby to deal with at the same time. So that's how that has been going. Um, oh, we took away the little potties last week. For a while, that's all he wanted to use was his little potties. And um, I just decided like, okay, I feel like he's got it down now. He's got the pee thing down now. Um, I, I don't think that we need to have little potties for him anymore because we have the bigger seats that we can put up on the big toilet. So since he like knew what he was doing now, I felt like it was a good time to make that transition. So I told him for the whole day ahead of time, I said, tomorrow we're going to say bye-bye to the little potties. I'm like, oh, today after nap time, we're gonna say bye-bye to the little potties. They're gonna be all gone. And so he accepted that and was okay with that. And it, it ended up being a non-issue and I got those um, little stools that go like they're curved and they like fit around a toilet so they're like out of the way and you can just pull it out um, for the kid to like step up onto and that has been amazing because I just keep the little you know toilet seat on the toilet with the little step stool there so I don't have to lift him up on there he can climb up and sit down on it by himself now so it's amazing and it's nice not having to clean up the little potty anymore <laughs> that's been going really well um, when we're out um, I do keep a little cheapy little plastic potty in the car while we're out and about you know if I can just find a little tucked away hidden place or even just in the back of the car I'll let him sit on the little potty back there sometimes when we're out um, he's still not quite comfortable sitting on public toilets and I'm not sure if I want to let him sit on them yet because they're he, you know 
they're just so gross and like getting his hands on them and blah. I, I'm still trying to figure out what to do about that. I suppose I could get him used to using the little toilet seat covers, but we haven't gotten to that point yet. So still figuring out what to do at that point. But when we are at other people's houses, like he's actually okay with using a big toilet now. So that is awesome. Anyway, that's how the first two months of potty training have gone for us. If you guys have any tips for me, like how to nip the pooping at nap time thing in the bud, I would greatly take advice on that. Um, and moving towards um, staying dry at nighttime and nap time, although I'm not as concerned about that. I feel like that will come with time. That's all for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and like this video, and we'll see you next time. Bye.